Hi, everybody, and welcome to Mary Giuliani Live. I am so glad you're here tonight. This is a conscious conversation salon show, which means that I will be interacting with anybody that wants to log in and just share whatever comments they have on the topic. So stay tuned. The topic tonight is the five top self-extreme care tips to save your uh, sanity during the holidays. So it's going to be a really fun show. And... Um, but in the meantime, I just want to make a couple of announcements. For those of you that are new, I love doing this show because I love being in the conversation of transformation. And so I just decided to go ahead and start my own show and start interviewing other thought leaders that were really going for it in their lives. So this is a great place for you to come and just listen to other people share their stories of how they're overcoming major adversities and, and how they're creating lives they love. So... Uh, the main thing for you to know, if you're new, is to, you need to make sure you get on my email list because that is when you will know who's coming up on the show. So all you need to do to do that is go right up to my website, MaryGiuliani.net, and there's a free show updates tab where you just put your name and email address in. And then um, also, if you're an iTunes person, you can actually get the show on iTunes. I have a channel. Mary Giuliani Live, and it'll just download directly into your iPhone, so you can do it that way, too. Um, and then, uh, what else? Uh, well, the beauty of live streaming is that we can actually have a conversation, because there's a little message section right below my uh, live stream box on Facebook Live, and so I encourage you to ask questions, make comments on the topic, because, I mean, the holidays can be really, really fun, but it can also be really overwhelming and really stressful. So there's some things that I've learned that I wanted to share, and I'd love to hear what you've learned as well. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, before we get started, some pretty cool things have been going on in my world, and so I just thought I would share those with you. Um, last week, I uh, was able to go and visit my one of my heroes in personal growth, Renee Brown, since she was speaking um, on her book tour for her Braving the Wilderness uh, book tour. And it was so fun. I went to Santa Monica last Wednesday night, so I'm sorry I wasn't here live. But what I was able to do was share an a interview of, uh, that I gave to Lily Winsaft and Bonnie Sachs from the Enlightened Humanity Circle. They had this spiritual rave program. So... Uh, basically, it was an interview about my story, and so if you would like to get a feel for where I came from and what I've gone through and what I've overcome and what I'm doing now and how I did it, um, just go up to my website and uh, go to the uh, talk show archives, and there's a link to that uh, interview video as well. So anyway, but I played that last week in lieu of me being out with Brene Brown. So anyway, the other cool thing that's been going on is... I was given an award for the Entrepreneur of the Year. Uh, three women were picked, and I was one of them, for uh, this organization called Live, Love, Thrive. And it's a women's conference. Actually, the, the, the organization is run by Catherine Gray, who has been really uh, so inspirational for me since she also uh, hosts a talk show, Empowering Women, and... And she's also uh, got some wonderful programs and things. And anyway, so they honored several entrepreneurs. And I got to get my Entrepreneur of the uh, Year Award. And so here it is. I don't know if you can see what it says, but maybe not. Basically what it says is Live, Love, Thrive. I wonder if I can. I don't think I can hold it up right. Anyway, it says Live, Love, Thrive uh, Conference 2017 Podcast Entrepreneur Mary Giuliani. So it was for this show. So yay. Uh, that was really thrilling for me since I just started this show in January of this year. And, you know, being part of Catherine's empowerment, like, vortex has been so key for me. And, and I, I actually gave a, a very short accept, acceptance speech at the conference. And actually, if you want to check it out, it's just a two-minute speech. And it's uh, on my website. Oops, the site. <laughs> To, if you go to the talk show archives on my website, there's just a, a little clip of... No, actually, is it on there? It, no, it's on the homepage of my website. Anyway, so that was really fun. Uh, so thank you, Catherine Gray. You've been so instrumental in helping me 
really have that consistent ongoing support. And that's one of my main messages to the world is with the right consistent support, you really can create a life you love. And so I really immersed myself with Catherine's support and some other teachers and, and programs as well. So yay. Okay, so let's see if I can see if I'm live on Facebook. Uh, it's interesting with Facebook Live. It takes like 20, I don't know, something like 20 seconds or something before you actually show up in the feed. So let me refresh my feed to see if I can even see that I'm live. Oh, there I am. Yay. Okay. Anyway, um, okay. So tonight's topic is all about how to save your sanity during the holidays because the holidays are just around the corner, you guys. Today's the 8th. So what is it? Uh, one, two, two weeks and one day to Thanksgiving. And gosh, you know, even though holidays can be really cool and you can connect with a lot of really, really wonderful, you know, friends and family, without the right kind of um, skills and support in place, you can really overwhelm yourself. And so I thought this conversation salon show would be really good for the holidays since we're probably all right in kind of the this planning stages of who do we want to get together with, who don't we want to get together with, what do we what do we really want for ourselves for the holidays? And so um excuse me if I'm looking away here a little bit because I'm trying to look at the chat and everything too. Anyway, um let's see. Uh so you know, having a plan and really getting support, like through watching this particular show, is really helpful. And so, uh, what I can tell you is 30 years ago, oh my God, the way I navigated the holidays is so different compared to today. I, I felt 30 years ago, I was pretty much sort of run by my family expectations and, and a lot of other duty and obligation kinds of things and and so you know I ended up doing a lot of things that I really didn't want to do and being in environments that were really not that healthy for me and so you know you pay the price and um, so tonight I just thought we, I would talk about a little bit about um, what we can do to prepare how to respond to requests for people that want to invite us to do stuff so um, okay so let's start with, well, first of all, um, where I got really even turned on about self-care around the holidays was just the broader subject of extreme self-care, The Art of Extreme Self-Care, which is uh, a book that Cheryl Richardson, who's one of my favorite coaches, wrote many, many years ago. And I ended up getting the book plus uh, purchasing the audio version of it and really got into it, and it's been such a huge life-changing experience for me to really have self, extreme self-care be part of like the way I do my life. And so it's so perfect to apply this to the holidays. So, okay, so here we are. It's the holiday season. You start getting, well, first of all, let's see what happens typically when we don't honor ourselves or are true to ourselves in the holidays. I mean, basically, we end up feeling guilty when we don't do what others want us to do, or if we, like, when others, you know, people that want us to do stuff like for business or personal things, or we end up uh, feeling resentful when we do things that we don't really want to do. Um, the other thing that can happen is, you know, due to our already overbooked and to-do list, many of our existing self-care routines go by the wayside, so we stop walking or we stop you know, really eating the way that we normally eat or doing any kind of spiritual practices. And that totally throws you off, too. So it sort of is a snowballing effect. Um, the other thing is that we can end up just feeling really angry and like, why is everybody else seem, seem like they're having a great time during the holidays and I'm not? Um, there's also uh, just when you're at these actual functions, just dealing with the different relatives that have different political views or religious views or or all the different family dynamics that haven't gotten worked out or that are unresolved and all these, I mean, there's all kinds of things at play uh, during, it's, it's, it's a really loaded kind of environment. So uh, it's, there's, you know, there's no secret why therapists are busiest uh, during the holiday season right around the first of the year. Um, okay, 
So, oh, and the other thing, of course, is what do we do when we're stressed out and we're not really taking care of ourselves is that we overindulge in food or alcohol or drugs or other behaviors that are, are you know, really a way to self-soothe. You know, and other behaviors can be just mindlessly surfing the Internet or Facebook or shopping or, you know, just anything that just sort of numbs you out and takes you away from the discomfort you're having for not being true to yourself. Um, okay, so let's see. You know, the first thing I like to talk about is what keeps us from really taking care of ourselves. Well, you know, for me, and I think for many people, is we never had it modeled to us as children or in our culture. I mean, our culture actually celebrates workaholism. In fact, something like 35% of people have are self proclaimed workaholics and many of them proud of it and um, so there's sort of a there's a badge of honor around um, really producing and overworking and accomplishment and and it's not to say there's anything wrong with with accomplishment and self mastery and you know going after your dreams but when it comes to the expense of your health and your sanity and your relationships you know you have to get back to, like, what's the real point of being here on the planet? Um, so, okay. What gets in the way is that it was never modeled to us. So without understanding the value of self-care and what keeps us from really practicing it, we're not going to change anything. Um, you know, a lot of people are like, don't really get really into why they're not taking care of themselves. But if you really look at it, um, you'll actually find out that um, there's a lot of guilt and shame when we decline, you know, when we, we decline people asking us to get together with them. And so we'll either say yes and either show up and be not really that present because we really don't want to be there and then we're really just there so that they won't be angry or hurt or upset with us. Or we end up saying yes and then canceling at the last minute and feeling guilty anyway. So it's like, okay, I think the first step here is getting really clear on our deserving to take care of ourselves. And, and that, I know for me, before I really got into my personal growth, I used to think, okay, so there's, if I don't say yes to my mom or my dad or whoever about a certain holiday event, then they're going to judge me as a bad I'm loyal daughter, and I'm going to feel really crappy if that's what I believe. You know, I'm going to feel really like a lot of shame about myself. And so the deal is, is that I needed to dig into that and really, really dig in further into to really recognizing that, you know what, I deserve to be true to myself, just like they deserve to be true to themselves. And so how do I want to experience the holidays? By the way, hi Darcy, I see you're, you're here, yay! Um, so the first step really is looking at, you know, what is my relationship with disappointing people? What is my relationship with um, feeling that discomfort of knowing somebody might be disappointed or angry or hurt or whatever? And like I said before I did a lot of this work, I used to think, I, and, and well, before, way, way before, I didn't even think about it. All I knew, and this was just sort of subconscious, was I needed to say yes because I knew that it was going to feel really bad to say no. And so anyway, um, so the bottom line is, let's start with, you know, like, what is it that, you know, typically comes up? Okay, so the first thing we want to start with is what do we want to experience during the holidays? So getting clear about your intention. Um, your time, and one of the things, one of Susan uh, McNeil Velasquez, one of my favorite teachers and earliest teachers, said once that our time and our energy are sacred, and that, that we own that, and that nobody has the right to demand that from us. And so if you can really get into that and dig into that and really own it, that you know what, you get to own your time and your energy. And so it really is okay for you to do whatever you want around any kind of invitation. But there's just so, many, so much charge around holiday stuff that um, I think we get stuck in thinking that, well, we just have to because if we don't, there'll be this huge fallout. But 
But the point here is, let's get clear about what we want to experience during the holidays versus what we want to avoid. Um, so for me, I typically just want to feel a connection with people I care about. I want to feel like um, I'm getting caught up on their lives. I'm, I'm wanting to feel, sometimes if there's children in my immediate family, I want to get to know maybe some of the kids that I haven't had a chance to talk to that much, maybe ones that are a little bit older, that are a little bit more mature. So there's all kinds of fun intentions. and Or I just want to play. You know, a lot of times there's really fun board games and or I want to bring some of my games. and So just getting really clear about what your intention is for the holiday season is really, really key. Um, hey, Sue Gallagher, I see that you joined. Nice to see you here, too. Um, so anyway, again, what is your intention? So write that down, you know. Uh, a lot of times we just go on automatic pilot and just sort of show up where we're asked to show up or, or that sort of thing. So get clear about what your intention is. You know what, your intention may be to get out of town and not see any of your family during the holidays, and that's a completely noble choice as well, you know? Okay, so intention. Um, here's, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm looking away here, but I don't want to miss some of my notes that I wanted to go over. Um, so you need to give yourself permission to really know what you want to experience um, and be proactive about creating it. So, uh, like, okay, so here's your list. What do I want to experience? What feeling experience do I want to have? Connection, fun, playfulness, silliness, spiritual connection. Just think about all the different, like, actual experiences that you want to have. And then write down the people that you want to be with. And it can be individuals or it could be, like, some kind of an organization or it can be a family gathering of some type. So, you know, you want to write down the types of people you want to be with. And here's another cool thing. If you don't want to be with anybody, you get to choose that, too. I mean, you know, I actually had Christmases all by myself, and I was completely fine. So, you know, um, there's no social constructs that we need to abide by or feel good or bad about, you know. Um, hi, Sue. It's good to see you. Ro Piccoli. Awesome. Good to see you, Ro. Um, okay, so again, getting clear about what you want, what's the actual emotional experience. And by the way, you guys that are online right now, feel free to comment back and forth because this show is not an interview show. This is what I call my conscious conversation salon, where I actually would love it if you guys would just make comments about the topic. We're talking about saving your sanity during the holidays and what tips and tricks that you use to really save your sanity. So please, uh, you know, say hi or make a comment or ask a question. Okay, so you're already clear about what you want. You're clear about who you want to hang with. Uh, you're clear about what you want to do. So, you know, there are many holiday seasons where, um, I remember when I was in a relationship, sometimes it would be like, you know what, let's, let's get out of town for the holidays. And, or, you know, let's go skiing or let's do this or... So get clear about what you want, not so much about how other people are planning and how you need to respond. Um, and then write that down. And then um, you want, you want these, these things to be your guide in terms of, of how you want to plan your holidays. So, so the next tip is, hi, Kathy Cornwall. I see you, you're here too. Yay. Um, okay. So the next tip is about how to handle invitations. As, as we all know, we get invitations from friends and family and business associates or work things. And, you know, it can, it can get, there's, there's going to be a lot of heavy expectations. And, you know, uh, especially with work, like you should be at this event no matter what. And, or like I know when I've been in relationships before, it was like, okay, so we're going to go to your family on this day and my family on this day and the step family on this day. And oh my God, you know, it's like you can, you can get to the point where you're just like running from one thing to another and hating the whole thing. And so the whole point here is to have fun and do what you want to do and look at the holidays like a buffet. You know, it's like, okay, so I want to have some of uh, my sister, uh, that dish, you know, for a few hours on this day, or I want to have some of my dad's 
that particular dessert on this day or this time frame. Or, and, you know, it's okay, too, to get clear about the people that you don't want to have an in-person interaction with or even a phone call interaction with and, and get clear about what kind of interaction you do want to have with them. It could be a greeting card interaction or a text or an email or nothing. I mean, it, again, it's your energy, it's your life. Um, and this isn't to say that we're here to be cruel or insensitive. It's really just about wanting to put your, uh, really get in touch with what your heart and soul wants. I mean, okay, so if you really look at it this way, would you really want people hanging out with you that really didn't want to be there? If you had a holiday party or whatever, and somebody showed up that really didn't want to be there, would you really want them there? I mean, they're usually a total drag. So to me, it's the highest, the highest good is for people to be doing what they want to be doing and not doing what they don't want to be doing. Okay. So when you start getting these, um, these, these requests for, for, you know, attending parties or gift exchanges or whatever, uh, you get to check in with yourself. Um, if, you know, if you know that you're not sure what you want to do, make sure you don't automatically say yes or no, but say, you know what, I'm really putting together my holiday plans and I need to get back with you. And so, you know, give yourself permission to pause and not feel like you have to, you don't owe anybody an answer immediately for anything anyway. Um, the other thing is if you know that you don't want to do something and you, um, I want to give you some tips on how to say no graciously. Um, if you don't know how to say no graciously, we can talk about that now too. So all the people that are out there right now, why don't you guys, Chime in and let me know what maybe some of the things that you've done to really do self-care things during the holidays, too. We'd love to hear from you. Okay. So let's say you get an invitation that you know you don't want to go to. Um, what do you do? Here is a great, really simple response that... It's very simple, but the way that you need to hold it within yourself is where the power is. So let's say uh, Sammy emails me and says, hey, Mary, there's this great party here uh, we're, we're going to have. It's a business associate of mine or something. You've got to be here. All these really cool people are here. I really want you to meet them. And, uh, you know, we've been working on this project, and you really need to be here. I mean, kind of like a pressure thing. And if I know I really don't want to be there, all I need to do is just say, you know, thank you, Sammy, so much for the invitation. I really honored you thought of me. Although I won't be able to make it, I am sure you'll have a great time. And whatever might need to transpire in terms of a business uh, interaction, let's get together after the holidays and go over it. So, uh, but again, thanks for thinking of me. Okay, so what we're doing there is we're not giving an excuse like, I'm too busy, or uh, I don't want to do business stuff during the holidays, or whatever it might be. You're not giving people the chance to sort of challenge it, and it's like, oh, well, that's okay, let's get together after the holidays. And then you've got the issue of somebody that still wants to get together with you that you don't want to get together with. So again, you want to stay back to just a very simple, thank you for inviting me, I'm sure it'll be a great event, but I really um, can't make it. So happy holidays. I'm really glad uh, that you invited me, though. Something like that. Well, look who's here, Jane Winter's here, too, and Cynthia Thompson. Hi, Cynthia. So good to see you. Also, Robin Zeiger and Kathy Brown Shire, I believe is how you say it. Um, okay, so that's how to deal with a no, I, I really don't want to make it. Um, now, if you've got a family member, let's say it's your sister, mother, father, just like a really immediate family member that's like really putting the guilt manipulation sort of trip on you. Um, I think a really powerful way to handle that if you know that you can't comply to the level that they want you to, like let's say they want you to spend the whole day, or let's say you're planning on just spending a couple of hours, and they're like, but you really need to be here for the dinner, and blah, 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 blah. Um, one of the things that I have been really fortunate to have learned in my coaching training and uh, 
is to actually tell people, you know, I'm in a, I'm in a process of really doing a lot of um, extreme self-care, which, and the reason I'm doing that is because I've noticed that, that I've been overstressed and overcommitted in my life for many years. And I know that stress is the main cause of most illnesses. And so I'm taking steps to take care of myself. So I really uh, want to ask you for your support in this. So that's another thing that you can do. So they don't personalize it. They're just able to say, I mean, what family member, it, let me just put it this way. If a family member can't support you after you say that, then it's an opportunity to like look at redefining your relationship with that family member. That's the way I look at it. And again, this is my opinion. Everybody has different values around family and what they're okay with and what they're not okay with. So um, let's see. What else? What else? What else? What else? Um, okay. So that's how to deal with requests and that sort of thing. Um, and again, if you guys have any questions, just type them right into the message section here in um, Facebook. Okay. So the third thing is, and okay, the other thing about saying no to an invitation and not feeling guilty is a lot of us were raised to believe that we have to put family first and we have to do what they say or we're just a bad, selfish person. And the truth is, is that, again, we all deserve to get our needs met, and if we said yes to every single request, we wouldn't even be healthy or alive to be present for those that wanted us there anyway. So um, I think that the, the main thing here is to recognize that somebody's disappointment in you has nothing to do with you. It has to do with them. And um, so, you know, and if you need support with that, you should... Definitely look into getting help. I mean, I'm a life coach. I work with clients with that all the time. In fact, one of my coaching tips at the end is going to be uh, about how to handle that. Um, okay, what else? What else? What else? Um, okay, so my fourth thing is what to do when things go south during the holidays. As we all know, family dynamics can be really intense, and not everybody has been doing their work, and there's going to be a lot of uh, people that are just going to be acting the way they've always acted, you know? There's going to be drunk people, there's going to be angry people, there's going to be, I mean, typically those are the types of drama things, or there's going to be uh, unresolved resentments between family members, all these different things that can come up, all the political stuff. I mean, okay, so here's my, I, I, sorry again for me for, for looking down here. Well, hi, Susan Brow. It's so good to see you. Um, feel free to comment or make, you know, uh, suggestions on how you handle the, the family dynamics during your holidays, too. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, so here's my, uh, what to do when things go south during a holiday. Well, first of all, I prepare. And so what I do is I, I prepare what I call my extreme self-care kit. And it, it's always, it needs to be on the ready just in case one of my crazy family members decides to say or do something that totally upsets me and triggers an emotional, painful experience for me. So if something happens like that during a party or at a family gathering, um, what I do is I always make sure I bring really comfortable walking shoes and a coat so I can take a walk around the block or, you know, if I'm feeling out of sorts, if I'm feeling triggered or stressed or hurt. The other thing I do is I bring a blanket, a pillow, a book, a journal, or an audio recording where I can retreat to my car for some journaling, a break, or a nap. In fact, when um, one of my last relationships uh, you know, the family gathering was typically all day or even an overnight thing. And so I get kind of overwhelmed after, you know, five hours or whatever. And so I would just go out to the car and uh, put on my personal girl CD or whatever and just take a nap and, or journal or whatever. So, and that was like totally cool. Um, the other thing is um, I bring my own snacks and drinks to family gatherings. Uh, you know, anytime you show up at an environment where you don't know what's going to be served or what the drinks are going to be, you know, you put yourself at risk for overeating or doing just 
Anyway, I think you guys get the, the, the picture here. So I have my own snacks and I have my own drinks. Of course, I love some of the, the treats and stuff that I get. But when I have my own snacks and my own drinks and stuff, then I'm not going to overindulge because I don't have my stuff with me. Okay, what else? What else? What else? Um, oh, okay. So um, the other thing is that when the topics of politics or religion or other content, potentially contentious subjects come up, um, what I said, and it's actually worked, is I think we would all agree that our common goal is to have a fun, festive connection with our family. Therefore, can we all agree that politics and religion are topics that we will refrain from discussing during the family gathering uh, and change the subject? Now, if you don't get agreement and certain people are just adamant about talking about politics that it just you find really kind of hostile or uh, offensive, then just leave, it, leave the room, find another group of people at the event, or leave. Um, and I'll tell you how you can leave either, uh, as well. <laughs> um, okay, how to leave an event early. So if you've tried everything in your extreme self-care kit to stay balanced and calm, and the environment you're in is not safe, emotionally or physically, or you still feel extremely uncomfortable, it's totally fine to leave. All you need to do is, and if you're with a partner or a friend or whatever, that's another thing, by the way, if, if you can bring a friend or you have a spouse, you want to get on the same page about how you want to work the support system there. Like with my ex spouse and I, we would say, okay, so here's the, the different hand signals or whatever, which means I'm triggered, I'm going to go out for a walk, or let's talk, or whatever. So have that, and also have your friends, you know, that are ready to hear your texts and stuff too. Um, okay, so how do you leave an event early? is if you've tried everything um, and you're still like, I can't even believe that this is happening here and i got to get out of here, all you need to do is tell the host or your sister or whoever it is that you're just not feeling well, you know, and that you need to get going. And if they want to bring up like, okay, what's going on? And, and you're not really ready to process that, it's fine just to say, you know, I'm just not feeling well. I don't know exactly what's going on. I'll, I'll get back with you or whatever. And just go and leave. It's your life, it's your time, there's no reason that you should stay in an event that you're not enjoying yourself in. Um, oh, Cynthia Thompson, thank you for your comment. Uh, I go with no expectations and ground myself before I go in. Yay! Very good. Uh, actually, that brings up a, a great uh, point for me is, right, literally, when we pull up, when I pull up to my, the curb of my family event, I really sit back and I kind of close my eyes and I say, okay, so what's my intention? Literally. And I'll say, you know what? I really want to find out something about my dad that I've never known about during this holiday season. Or I really want to find some common ground with my sister on this holiday season. Or I'm going to practice you know, saying no to talking about boundaries or whatever it might be. But just have an intention. And then Go for it and see what happens. Hey, Susan Landers here. So good to see you. Um, so again, for those that are that, that are out there, um, please, you know, make a comment. Share with us what you do to have a happy, healthy holiday season. Um, let's see. It's 7:35. Since I don't have a guest that I'm interviewing tonight, I thought. Um, this show might go a little bit shorter, which is fine, because I can do whatever I want, because it's my show. Yay! <laughs> um, so unless there's any other comments, I'm just going to start talking about a couple of other things. Um, let's see. Well, actually, my coaching challenge. Okay, so this is a great coaching challenge, because it's about the holiday season. Again, Thanksgiving is only a couple of weeks away. Um, so my co as as, you, as I mentioned, I'm a life coach, and so one of the things that I challenge my clients to do, and this may sound counterintuitive, but it is super transformational, is to practice disappointing one person a week up through the end of the holiday seasons around a holiday question or request. In other words, you've won this challenge when you've disappointed 
one person or more per week by saying no or no, I can't, I can't do that or whatever. And the reason why disappointing people and getting okay with disappointing people is so important is because you can't practice extreme self-care unless people sometimes get disappointed. So we need to be able to tolerate other people's disappointment and recognize that it's not it has nothing to do with us because some people will be disappointed and some people won't. So obviously it has nothing to do with us. It just has to do with them and their whole reality of their matrix of whatever. <laughs> so again, I really want to challenge you to, to, to make sure that you disappoint at least one person per week for the next six weeks during this holiday season and let me know how it goes. And also, and get really intentional about what you want to experience, and be true to yourself. Uh, you know, uh, there's this really good Oscar Wilde saying, let me see if I can find it. Um, okay, I know I'm totally looking away here, but it's on my wall, but I love it. And it's, selfishness is not living as one wishes to live. It is asking others to live as one, uh, as one wishes to live. So it's not, it's not that selfishness is living as one wishes to live. It's, it's asking other people to live how you want them to live. And so, you know, the bottom line is you deserve to have a great holiday and a great life. And you can actually transfer these skills into the rest of your life. Okay, so the next uh, announcement I have are my coaching services. I am a life coach, and I love working with two types of coaching clients. The first thing I do is I actually help other people live stream. Uh, so if you would ever like to reach a global audience, I can actually produce your show for you from anywhere in the world. In fact, I've had different people from different countries and different uh, states uh, join me uh, in my live streaming equipment. And so in other words, I can produce a show for you without you even having to have technical skills and bring in guests and that sort of thing. So if you'd like your own talk show, I can help you. Just go up to my website, MaryGiuliani.net, and go to the streaming and webinar services. And if you would like help in, I also do a type of coaching called Living Your Calling Coaching. And this is where I typically work with women that are in midlife, that are just at a place in their life where they don't want to die with their music still in them. Uh, and, that, and that on their own, they haven't felt like they've been able to get the kind of traction that they needed. I know that was me for many years, and so I finally broke through, and I am living my highest calling, and I am 100% authentic in who I am and what I'm doing in my life, and I love helping other women to do that too. And so if you are looking to really share your gift with the world and live your highest calling, just go right up to my website, mirajuliani.net, and go to the coaching section, and uh, let's talk. Um, what else? Oh, so next week we have um, Sheila Rubin, who was actually a guest of mine back in July. She actually does a couple of types of psychotherapy. One of them is, she was on the show last week for Healing Shame because she's an a expert at helping people heal shame um, issues. Well, the other thing she's an expert at is helping heal developmental trauma or Trauma from being raised in a really dysfunctional childhood or even having accidents like traumatic accidents or um, uh, a lot of different surgeries and that sort of things as children while your brains are still developing. There's all kinds of research that's come out, and I did a show on this a few weeks ago uh, uh, by the uh, name, the doctor who did it, uh, wrote the book called The Body Keeps the Score, is Bessel van der Kolk. And so Sheila's an expert on healing developmental trauma as well. And so I'm really, really excited about having her next week. So um, please make sure that you're, you're there for us for that. Um, what else? What else? What else? Um, I don't think there's any more questions. Oh, Susan Lander. There is one more um, comment here. Susan says, my holiday coping strategy is to eat before I go to events so I can stay mindful about what I'm eating and enjoying. Yay! I love that. Thank you, Susan. Oh, and that reminds me. There's another thing, another tip about the holiday events, and that is be strategic about where you sit and who you interact with. Like, there were certain people at certain family holiday events that I used to go to where I made sure I was not sitting next to them at the 
table for the dinner or just because it was just draining and toxic for me. And so, you know, that's okay too. Um, you get to create what you want and you deserve to create what you want. So with that, unless there's any other uh, mentions in the chat room, I think we're good there. I want to wish you, well, I'm actually, we're, we're going to be back next week on the 15th to see uh, Sheila Rubin, so make sure you come back for that. And with that, have a great week, everybody. And uh, the last thing I always say, which I love saying, is what's one thing that you can do to be true to yourself? And start that one thing tomorrow. Write it down so you'll do it, and your life will transform. Bye, everybody. See you next week.